morning. Good to see you on this beautiful Thursday morning, the Sunday after Christmas. I have a sinus infection, so I apologize. I will try to do my best not to make gross noises and do my best to get through here without falling down with the tube. But I, I feel pretty good. No, I don't. But that's fine. I'll be okay. Don't worry about it. I would appreciate your prayers, please, be with Kathleen Ward. Kathleen's in the hospital here in town. Also, would appreciate prayers for Lois Gerken. Lois had some eye surgery this past week, but is now at home recovering. And we'll have to stick around in our house for about three weeks. So please keep Lois in your prayers. Also, we want to continue to keep in prayer Charlotte Longren. And Charlotte was in a hospital last I heard, so I assume she's still there. We want to we're grateful that Terry Hayes had successful surgery and is back home and here with us this morning, so it's good to see her. Amy Allison also had surgery this past week and a successful surgery. She's doing well, recovering at home. There are poinsettias. If you take poinsettias home, feel free to do that this morning. I guess your names are on those, from what I understand. So people's names are on their, their poinsettias. Um, you can always switch names if you don't like one you're supposed to take home, I guess, for a quick. While they're not here at this first service, so they can switch your name. Uh, we have New Year's Eve service this New Year's Eve, surprisingly enough, at 7 o'clock, I believe. So please keep that in mind. And um, I was looking for Pat Morgan. I didn't see her out there. And I was looking and looking and looking, and there she is, right there. So she's playing the organ for us this morning. And we a little bit of time off. Were there any other announcements or prayer concerns this morning? We are having installation of our church officers and those who are here at the first service this morning, if you would please come forward at this time. Any new church officers? Over here, a couple of them come. We want to very much thank those who are willing to serve in these positions. Usually it's not too much of a as any of you who have served on church council before can tell you, sometimes it's very much of a headache, and there the, it takes a lot of patience, a lot of effort, most of all, takes a lot of love to serve the Savior, Jesus Christ, to uh, give up your time and talent for this position. And we thank you very much for doing that this morning. St. Paul says, it's each, uh, each of our bodies has several parts, each part has a separate function. So all of us in union with Christ form one body, and as parts of it, we belong to each other. Our gifts vary according to the grace given to us. If your gift is prophecy, then use it as your faith suggests. If administration, use it for administration. If teaching, then use it for teaching. Let the preachers deliver sermons, the almsgivers give freely, the officials be diligent, and those who do works of mercy, do them cheerfully. Will you assume these offices of Emmanuel Lutheran Church to which you have been elected? Will you, in, will you endeavor to discharge your duties faithfully to the glory of Christ our Lord and the service to his holy church? If so, answer, I will, and I ask God to help you. Will you, the people of God, of Emmanuel, will you support and pray for these people in their work? If so, answer, we will. We Let us pray. Gracious Father, you call your people to service. Give them very tasks in this world and in your church. Grant these people grace and strength that they may serve you faithfully to the glory of your name. For your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I now declare you installed as council members of the church in the year 2014. Thank you very much. Will the congregation please rise? In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, the maker of heaven and earth, the Word made flesh, the Lord, the giver of life. Amen. Let us
us come into the light of Christ, confessing our need for God's mercy. God of peace, we confess that we are not at peace with others or with ourselves. We can bring to you all that you have supplied, the discord in our families, the violence in our world, our own conflicted hearts. In your mercy, lend us. We connect us to one another and to you. And let peace reign over all the earth. Through the Prince of Peace, our Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. In the Word, He was to come to dwell with us. God has given us grace upon grace. Forgiveness that is stronger than our sin. Love that can heal every broken heart. Hear this word of God's promise and peace. In the name of Jesus, our Savior, you are free from all your sins. Rise, shine, for your light has come. <laughs> Praiseworthy acts of the Lord, 
because of all that the Lord has done for us, and the great favor to the house of Israel that he has shown them according to his mercy, according to the abundance of his steadfast love. For he said, Surely they are all my people, children who will not deal falsely. And he became their savior in all their distress. It was no messenger or angel, but his presence that saved them. In his love and in his pity, he redeemed them. He lifted them up and carried them all the days of old. The word of the Lord. This morning we'll read Psalm 148, responsibly by full verse. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord from the heavens. Praise him in the heights. Praise him, Praise him, sun and moon. Praise him, all you shining stars. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for he commanded, and they were created. Praise the Lord from the earth, you sea monsters and all the deeps. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the world. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name only is exalted. His splendor is over earth and heaven. second lesson is from the second chapter of Hebrews. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. And again, I will put my trust in him. And again, here am I and the children whom God has given me. Since therefore the children share flesh and blood, he himself likewise shared the same things, so that through death he might destroy the one who has the power of death, that is, the devil, and free those who all their lives were held in slavery by the fear of death. For it is clear that he did not come to help the angels, but the descendants of Abraham. Therefore he had to become like his brothers and sisters in every respect, so that he might be a merciful and faithful high priest in the service of God, to make a sacrifice of atonement for the sins of the people. Because he himself was tested by what he suffered, he is able to help those who are being tested. The word of the Lord. Rachel weeping for her children, 
She refused to be consoled because they are no more. When Herod died, an angel of the Lord suddenly appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up and take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who were seeking the child's life were dead. Then Joseph got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was ruling over Judea in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. And after being warned in a dream, he went away to the district of Galilee. And there he made his home in a town called Nazareth, so that what had been spoken through the prophets might be fulfilled. He will be called a Nazarene. The Gospel of our Lord. Alexandria, among them, 
he built several palaces. Among the palaces that he built was Masada, which is still used by the Jewish people today in induction of their people in the armed services. He was a great conqueror. He was a great warrior. He had incredible wealth. He had incredible power. And you know what he is most remembered for? For killing babies. That was Herod. Most remembered for killing babies. Because of the baby, he was so afraid. Our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ. So Herod's great accomplishments are not remembered at all today, really. And this one little child is remembered by millions and millions and millions. Information is not knowledge. Information is not knowledge. You can have all sorts of information and have absolutely no knowledge. We have a society today that has tons and tons and tons of information. And it's available at the touch of your finger. There it is. But the information is not necessarily knowledge. Herod had lots of information, but very little knowledge. So what was he afraid of exactly? He was afraid he was going to lose his throne. He was afraid that the Romans would be upset with him, having this other king who was born. He didn't want any competition. So just like in the business world, what you do when you don't want competition is you try to eliminate it. And that's what he did. Jesus came to eliminate competition, which is kind of ironic. I think we're all looking for some kind of validation in this world, we're looking for some kind of verification or identification. And we have all sorts of things in this world that do try to identify with us, especially in the business world. We have advertising that tries to identify with us, TV shows, channels, radio stations, sports events, whatever, movies, music. Everybody and everything tries to identify with us. And all you have to do is go searching and you can find something that is trying to identify with you. The funny thing is, is that Jesus is not trying to, he has already identified with us completely through the cross. And now what he's trying to do is have us identify with him. He wants to turn it around. But we want this verification. We all want to be told and reassured that we're on the right track, that we are right in what we believe and the way we're going. Oli and Sven thought they were on the right track and they were following these tracks for a long, long time and all of a sudden the train came by and hit them both. They were on some tracks for sure. I love movie trailers. Movie trailers are the commercials for movies and I, I could sit and watch them all day. The thing of it is for some movie trailers, the best stuff for the movie is in that trailer itself. And the rest of the film maybe is not very good at all. I love chocolate commercials. You know those chocolate commercials with the rivers of chocolate and stuff? You guys know the ones I'm talking about? I love those things. I like chocolate. I don't even like it that much, but when I see those commercials, it makes me very, very hungry for chocolate. Whether it's selling cars, whether it's selling chewing gum, shoes, pool tables. They always have beautiful people, beautiful music, fast action. You know what the advertising God has? Us. Very simply us. There was a very horrific story of a woman, I don't know if you remember this, and maybe they tried to forget it, a few years ago, who killed another woman, and she took her baby, this other woman was pregnant, and she actually cut her open and took the baby from her womb. She wanted a baby of her own and could not have you look at something like that and you think, how could something like that happen? But people can become so obsessed, so mentally ill, so spiritually ill, so off balance, that you do not see the horrors that they cause. 
And I'm convinced that Herod did not see the horrors that he caused. And we at times do not see the horrors that we allow to happen. Herod could kill all those babies because he himself was spiritually so off balance. It became all about him. And human life meant nothing to him. Usually in those cases, we do become very judgmental. And we look at those people and we think, like I say, how can anyone do something so horrendous? But you know what? We kind of look away ourselves a great deal. I preached in my home congregation um, a couple years ago. <clears throat> Excuse me. We all were son one of the Ten Commandments. Mine was the uh, Fifth Commandment, Thou shalt not kill. They were inviting the people who had left that church and become ministers and there were several of us, I think there was something like close to 40 from that one congregation. But my uh, assignment was to preach on um, the fifth commandment, thou shalt not kill. So I started out the sermon by looking out in the congregation and I said, you are all murderers. Of course, I, they were regretted and by me in the first place. And I proceeded to tell them why. You may not think of yourself as being a murderer. You wouldn't murder anyone, especially a baby. But anytime we walk away from someone, anytime we shun them, anytime we turn our backs on them, anytime we don't care, guess what you're doing? You are saying you don't care if they're on this earth or not. They're irrelevant. You walk away, you're indifferent to their life. That's a murder. And we all have done that at different times in our life. We all do that today. There are segments of the population of this world that we don't really care about. And we don't think about. That term of pro-birth or pro-life and uh, uh, pro-abortion always kind of gets me. I am actually very conservative in the area of abortion. I only think they should be used in case of uh, incest and rape and the health of the mother. My wife is on the other side. She's very, very liberal in that. She says, it's none of my business what a woman does with her body. It's purely hers. So we're kind of on different ends in that. But I hate the term pro-life. I don't think that's appropriate. It's pro-birth. There are a lot of people in this world who are pro-birth, but then after the child is born, who cares? We don't think the child should be provided for. We don't care if the child has enough to eat. We don't care if the child has health care. We don't care if the child has a proper education. We're just for the birth. So what? We're not pro-life then. To be pro-life would be for that child from the very second it is conceived to the very second it meets its maker. That's pro-life, which Christ was. And I'm afraid none of the rest of us go there too much. I was reading an article about wacky warning labels. And you know, all of you, uh, I guess the ladder is the most the, uh, the notorious one. Everybody who has a ladder will look at the long list of things about the ladder to be aware of. But this article was pointing out crazy things that are on different products. And this one was a, uh, a vanishing fabric marker right on fabric, but then it would vanish and disappear. And what's on this, this vanishing fabric marker is should not be used as an instrument for signing or writing checks or legal documents. Done. There was a letter opener, and on the letter opener, there is this warning. This is all true, by the way. Blade extremely sharp. Safety goggles recommended. The top three of the crazy labels are as follows. They are standing right now. Number three, a baby stroller with a very small pouch in it, and on it, it says, do not put child in the bag. Number two on the list of the wacky labels is a t-shirt, and on the t-shirt, it has a warning on it, do not iron while wearing shirt. Guys, I'm going to repair it. 
Number one was there's a small tractor. It's kind of a <coughs> small tractor. I don't can't remember who the owner is. I think it was a John Deere, but I don't remember. Anyway, it's a small tractor, and it has a little shovel. Has a shovel on it, you know. And it has a warning label on it that says, uh, "Avoid death on small." Uh, so do not get caught between shovel and tractor. Avoid death. Probably a good idea. So what should Jesus be warning about in this coming year of 2014? Avoid spiritual death. Avoid becoming like Herod. We would never do that, we tell ourselves. Be careful. It always kills me at this time of year that they have the list of the best of this and the best of that and of the coming year. They've already had all those lists done. You know that, don't you? You know how many more days we have this year? Who in the world knows what is going to happen from now until Tuesday at midnight? But they already have a list compiled. All the people, the famous people who have died, the most important events of the year, it's already done. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ says nothing is done. Nothing is over. My love is here for you and for this world, for every single person in this world. The origin of Bedlam always uh, fascinates me, the word Bedlam. In um, London, there was a, uh, a hospital that was called the Bethlehem Royal Hospital. It was the first hospital in England was built in the 1400s. This hospital was used to house physical pa patients with physical problems in the 1400s. In the 1500s, in the year 1547 to be exact, it was made into a mental institution, the first mental institution in the, in the country of England. So it was the Bethlehem Royal Hospital. Now the people in that area would not pronounce Bethlehem like Bethlehem. They kind of only pronounced two syllables. So Bethlehem was really Bethlehem. Bethlehem. The word Bethlehem came to be the word Bedlam. And that's where we get the word Bedlam today. Where things are crazy, insane, and chaotic. It comes from the word Bethlehem. I think that's so fascinating. That says so much about us and our world. We can go from absolute craziness to absolute peace. From Bethlehem to Bethlehem. From Bethlehem to Bethlehem. Just one small step. There were four ministers who were writing together from a conference. And, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, at this conference they were. Uh, it was a very emotional conference. And one that really touched their hearts as to how they should straighten up their lives. And so they were writing home from this thing, and there was silence at first because they were still kind of absorbing everything that had happened. And finally, one minister said, I have to make a confession to the rest of you. He said, I've never told anyone this before, but my great sin is drinking too much. And he said, and as of right now, I am not going to drink any longer, not going to attend any more wild parties, made a new commitment. There was silence again. Another minister said, well, I have to confess to you my great sin is stealing. And I have stolen thousands and thousands of dollars from my congregation. And I'm making a new commitment to make restitution of all that money. And I will never steal another penny from them again. And there was silence again. And the third man spoke up and he said, well, I have to make a confession to you guys. He said, uh, I'm a womanizer. And he said, I have had affairs with different women in all of my congregations I've ever served. And I feel terrible about it. And I'm making a new commitment now that we can do that again. And there was silence again. And finally, the fourth man spoke up and he said, I have to confess to you guys that my great sin is gossiping. And I can't wait to get back to my job. <laughs> the Bethlehem life. The gift 
to the Savior, the gift of his love, the gift of craziness that we all know we have at times in our hearts, in our lives. We have all the information that we need. Do we have the knowledge? Do we have the understanding? Sometimes we act as if we're almost afraid of our Lord and Savior as Herod was. Afraid of where he might lead us, afraid of what he might call us to do. Fear not, the angels said to the shepherds, as they do to us. The knowledge of peace through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is with you.
believe in God, the Father Almighty, the Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified and died in his spirit. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Shine your favor on your people, and uphold us with the abundance of your steadfast love. Send us out from our assembly, trusting in your presence, to announce your gracious deeds. 
Hear us, O God. Fill all who hunger with your gracious provision. Establish justice in the way that food is grown and distributed. Work through agencies, such as the World Hunger Appeal, to feed all people. Hear us, O God. Make your ways known to all the nations. Join all people together, young and old, rich and poor, in order to work your righteous acts among them. Hear us, O God. Draw near to all children, the sisters and brothers of Jesus. Free the young and vulnerable ones who are in the chains of abuse, poverty, or neglect. Give them abundant life. Hear us, O God. Remembering your covenant that draws the saints into one community, join our voices with theirs in the praise of all the good things you do for your people. Hear us, O God. Ease the suffering of all who live with chronic illness, addiction, or distress. We include in our prayers this morning Amy Allison and Terry Joda, Lucy's Weevil, Sandy Borson, and Benson Schwab, Barb Schufeld, Laura Grant, Tammy Miller, and Jamie Bossman, Cass Holden, Lenore Pedraza, Colleen Cable, Kathleen Warren, and Valerie. For Bob Nestor, Denny, Jackie, Dustin Brown, Anna Long, Alice Overhouse, and Lucas Grossbrook. Joshua Jenny, Ken Ludeman, Linda, Roma Brown, Paul Long, and Larry Zachary, Mary Brown, Paul Kuzno, Jeff Warner, and Rudy Icon. We pray for Pat Badenhoff, Marjorie Downs, Ray Ryder, Alexa Jennings, Emma Myers, Lois Birkin, Morris, Bur Morris Chris Schmidt-Meyer, Stephanie Nelson, and Beth Jenny, for Dick DeWeese, Ted Tiffenmeyer, Irene Portis, Lois Weekers, and Jimmy Booth, Alfred and Rita Priggy, Jordan James, Jeff Keeper, Brent Thompson, Rudy and Ann Raby, and Kelly Garst. For Naomi Rose, George and Cindy Pope, Arlita Panny, Kelly Troyer, and Linda Hill. Bethany Wolf, Landon Zunk, Paul Panny, and JP. Miranda Shank, Don, Susan Dravis, and Alice Langenhoff. For Kate Michaelis, Crystal Garcia, Laura Bossman, Josh Badenhoff, Sandy Bossman, Louisa Bevel, Shirley Myers Pages, Kate Key, Caitlin Roars, and Jeff Tiffany. For Ben Michaelis, Juanita Clausen, and Susan Allen, Mary Lou Zwiebel, and Audrey Schrader. For Donna Norton, Millie Miller, Stan and Eileen Maybe, Charlotte Longman, Melanie Simpson, Eleanor Engler, and Jeannie Curtis. For Roman Strong, Betsy Mix, CA, Fred Close, Bill Winsman, and Robert Klassen. For Josh Bevel, Norma Strayer, Linda Loss, Dave and Betty Meyer. Marlene Kreider and Brennan, for Jeff Brown, Tammy Porter, Allie Grace Small and Carol Barron, Lucas King, Dick Brown, Sarah Lindhart, Deb Shank and Andrew Williams, and all those we name now in our hearts. <coughs> Surrounded with family and friends who bring assurance of your compassion and care, Hear us, O oh God. We pray, Heavenly Father, for those in our congregational family who will be celebrating their birthdays in this coming week. Those people include Don Myers, Bobby Bunchko, Stephanie Nelson, Emma Piola, Laura Wolfram, Lori Middleton, Carl Yonker, Jason Jordan, and Sean Sleep. And we pray for those who are celebrating their anniversaries, including Steve and Phyllis Close, Scott and Sandy Long, and John and Donna Noel. We also pray, Lord God, for those serving in the military from this our congregation, this our country, including Mike Dimache, Elizabeth Yoder, Tyler Hayes, Austin Oberg, and Zach Bonham. Be with them all and bless them and keep them in your heavenly grace. Almighty God, we entrust you all for whom we pray, confident that you fulfill your promises through Christ our Savior and Lord. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom. 
May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine on you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.